to Whale of the Day. Hello and thanks for joining us today on a very special Around the Peninsula. I'm Maria Soreo. And I'm Liz Brown Swanson. And we are here at the annual Whale of a Day celebration in the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. That's right, we are here at the Point Vicente Interpretive Center and every year they've got a big party of course, celebrating the whales. It is. It's to celebrate the wonderful whale migration. Of course, doing this in April now, Maria, the whales are heading north to go they back are. home. And beautiful weather and so much going on out here. And we actually have some new things to talk about this year, Liz. This year's Whale of a Day is going to be super exciting. You're right with some new things. And of course, thousands of people will be here today. Yes. First of all, the Point Vicente Interpretive Santa Maria has two new exhibits. There's That's going right. to be a ribbon cutting to showcase them. They're fabulous. Now, it takes so many people to make this event happen. Yes. So let's catch up with them and uh, check it out. Every year, of course, you put this amazing event together. I'm sure it takes a long time. Just tell us about the preparation for this event. Well, it's, and I think I've told you this every year, is that uh, I think the first meeting for next year is next week. Uh, but no, we're getting all the, the docents together, the volunteers we have, uh, the sponsors and city staff. Uh, it's a long process, but it's um, obviously it's worth it. A success every year and Emily you had a new dis two new displays this year tell us a little bit about that yeah so we're really ecstatic to be able to share our new exhibits at whale of a day um, one is obviously the classic third order Fresnel lens that's featured and on loan from the US Coast Guard the other exhibit is a whaling exhibit so it gives the history of Portuguese Ben and the whaling that took place there in addition to that we've actually installed the other day was Blue Rivard did artwork for us so it's basically a painting that's been scanned and, and digitally blown up and put on a mural in our exhibits here so much history right here and I know people come through every single day and, and see everything just tell us a little bit about the interpretive center well the interpretive center was built years ago um, and it expanded and I think since that expansion it's it's gotten on the radar uh, not only with uh, tourists and you know from Terranea or just passers through but also from school groups and uh, our docents do a fantastic job in bringing people uh, smaller school elementary school age kids uh, come through here and it's a part of their curriculum so uh, we appreciate that we're a part of something a little bit bigger not only to teaching people about what it is and, and what we provide here from a marine standpoint um, but also getting that opportunity out of our doors and uh, uh, making sure that uh, the, those that are outside the city and can't uh, don't uh, aren't able to see this every day um, it's fantastic to give them that opportunity Emily you dial up this amazing view every day how do you do it <laughs> I love it. I mean, I lived it up. I actually recently relocated my desk so that I could get a better view of the ocean. And I mean, like Corey said, the school groups that come here, the docents actually have a special program, um, the WOW program, which brings Title I schools that are from probably inner city um, that don't have the financial means to get here. And so they give them funding for buses. And it's just priceless, the reaction of some of these kids that they don't even live that far from the ocean and they've never seen it. So it's, it's such a special place and it really means a lot to be able to do that for the community and other kids around. All right, we know that you guys are very busy, but what's your favorite thing about Whale of a Day? Uh, about 4 o'clock. No, food is usually the better part of it. But I like seeing all the different types of vendors. Um, it's, it's great seeing, sometimes this is, it's kind of like a reunion. Uh, I don't see a lot of these people unless it is one a day or once a year or at, at July 4th. So it's kind of nice just to have that quick reunion too. For you, Emily. I'd say just bringing the community together. It's also really nice for the staff because normally we're kind of all working at our respective park sites, and so it's really a full force effort. I got to give credit to Mona and Lisa. They put this whole thing on. They are the working force behind it, but obviously the rest of the staff were here to just assist and be do what they need to make this really a wonderful day for everyone. Mona, this event is really a labor of love, but you guys have it down. Just tell us a little bit about the Whale of a Day process. So there's a lot that goes into it, and we invite oh, close to 40 to 45 organizations from throughout the community. Our Los Serenos, of course, do an amazing bang-up job. And it's all about kids, really, and educating about the whales. So really, it doesn't seem like work. It's a real pleasure to put on this event. You know, there's so many people that want to come every year. You've got new food vendors, and how do you keep it fresh? So that's the thing. We always have a goal of adding a minimum of like one new thing every year. Sometimes we get rid of the old, sometimes we keep them and we bring in new. So that's just a kind of an internal goal that we'd like to try to keep. And then of course, you were mentioning the kids. There's kids everywhere having fun in the bounce house, eating, you name it, they're doing it. So I don't know if you've ventured over to the whale races. We have a new upgraded whale race here, so that's a big hit this year, especially in the seat. They're having a blast over there. 
Mona, lastly, what is your favorite thing about Welva Day? So you know that I absolutely love the fact that everybody here at this event is here because they love whales, they love the ocean, and that just permeates everything, and it just makes it such a great day. Ladies, it is an honor to have both of you right here to talk a little bit about Los Serenos, the great work that you do because you co-sponsored this event today, and just the great work that the docents do and that Los Serenos does. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, we teach. We learn. We teach, we raise funds, we educate the public, we bring uh, students from all over the, the area, uh, many of whom don't get to come and see the ocean and come to a place like this, and we bring them in by the busloads and give them tours. So that's the, the crux of our work. Basically, and, yeah. basically, Joanna, how has it changed over the years? Well, the people have changed, of course. Uh, I'm not sure there's anybody left from 1984, but we started off as a very enthusiastic group of 25 and um, went from there on. And the second year, we started Whale of a Day, and here we are on the 30, 30, 34th, 35th Whale of a Day. And it's grown amazingly. We have a lot of new programs, of course, uh, and a lot more docents than we did. But um, it's an organization that has given back to the community. And I love the people who I work with. Um, that's why I'm still here after all these years. <laughs> Big thank you to so many volunteers, Maria, that make this happen. You know what, and that group, Los Serenos de Point Vicente, who co-sponsors this with the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, they're so knowledgeable and uh, they're out here every day giving tours. They're just amazing. Right, they're right here at the Interpretive Center every day, these docents. In fact, they're all gearing up for the big ribbon cutting to celebrate the two new exhibits that's right. that are right here. Those exhibits are really cool. First one is about whaling and the history of whaling on the peninsula. Yes. And the second one is about the fact that we now have the Fresnel lens yes. that was at the Point Vicente Lighthouse for, right. since, for 93 years. It's amazing, and they, actually, to see that up close. Yes, Coast Guard donated it to the Interpretive Center. It is on display. It's phenomenal to see, and they're having a ribbon cutting right now Very to showcase these two new exhibits. So should we check it out? Let's check it out. Are we ready? Are we ready? Eric, everybody get your hands in. Everyone, ready? One, look up. Two, three. Yeah! Are we officially open now? Officially open. Great job. a big moment for you, Chief. You were part of this decommissioning and installation of this magnificent lens. Talk about this moment to be here today for the grand ribbon cutting. Well, first off, it turned out amazing. So it's nice for the crew to come in and, and see, you know, part of what they did. But more important than that, it's an opportunity for us to kind of uh, enshrine our history into the community of uh, Rancho Palos Verde. Um, so that we can look at this Fresnel lens as part of, you know, that's how the Coast Guard started with the Lighthouse Establishment and then later the Lighthouse Service eventually merging with the Coast Guard. So it is Coast Guard history as well as history for the city as well. It's fantastic. And it was such a nice partnership, the city and the Coast Guard. We're neighbors right here, so it's it's not like it's far away from home. No, it's awesome. You know, we, uh, we're still going to be maintaining the Lighthouse, you know, just down the hill. So uh, anytime that we want, we can come in and take a look at it. I'm pretty excited about it. One last reminder of how come this project came to be? Why did you decide that you needed to, to retire this lens after 93 years of service? Well, the lens itself, you know, was getting a little bit outdated. We have better technology now with the, uh, you know, LEDs. Uh, they're just more reliable, cost less to run. Uh, we'd love to have the lens up there forever, but, you know, just wasn't going to work out. So uh, luckily we were able to uh, disassemble it and reestablish it here at the Interpretive Center. I'll let you go. You're here with your entire family, including your newest baby. Congratulations. What do you love about the Whale of a Day celebration for your family? Oh, this is awesome. My kids are having a good time. This is my first one, so we're actually eager to get out and kind of see uh, more of the uh, activities out here. They're loving the bounce houses right now, so we're going to start with that and some kettle corn. That was so exciting, and really to see something like that lens right here close up is pretty cool. Absolutely. So many special things here. What do you find most special about Whale of a Day? Hmm. Well, if we were just talking about the Interpretive Center, I'd have to say shopping, <laughs> but 
In fact, I bought these earrings from the Interpretive Center. <laughs> see? See, see themed. We, they have a sand dollar. That's it. That's it. There's just so much fun stuff to do here. But I really love talking to the whale watchers, uh, the people that take the census and the back patio because they're so dedicated to that. And it's always fun to talk to them about how many whales they've seen. It's really fun to watch the counting of the whales. But also for me, what I count on doing here is making a whale hat. You I haven't do. done that yet, but I'm no. going gonna, gonna to go after that. It's going to be my next activity, I think, is to make it's, myself a whale hat. It's very fun. You have to take one home every year. <laughs> now, there's so many local leaders that come out also to enjoy Whale of a Day. So let's find out what their favorite thing about Whale of a Day is, Liz. Let's do it. It's always an honor to be with the mayor of Rancho Palos Verdes, Mayor Jerry Dehovic. 35th annual Whale of a Day doesn't get better than this. Does not get better than this, Liz. Just look around. Uh, you know, if this isn't paradise, I don't know what is. And special thanks to the staff. We asked them to call in and order for a spectacular day, and they did not did not uh, disappoint. Well, we're glad you're taking time out to talk with us, and I know when you're not doing this, hopefully you can ring that bell when we spot a whale. You know, when we were doing our formal presentation, I heard someone yell whale, and I didn't hear the bell, but I think they did have a spotting this morning, so hopefully that continues. Every year I think this gets bigger and bigger, um, the celebration of the whale migration, but really this is about the community coming together. You know, it really is. I got here a little bit before 10 o'clock, like 15 or 20 minutes, and I was shocked how many people were here at 10 o'clock. I guess it's just a spectacular day the sun's out booths music food neighbors friends it's just a spectacular and i look forward to spending the rest of the day here with my family so. it's about tradition you say family your family you bring them you come together every years year years yeah it's got to be 16 years my daughter was 14 she's been here every year of her life we come and we enjoy it and like i said it brings you know rpv is a very large city and uh this brings a small town hometown atmosphere where neighbor can talk to neighbor people you don't see regularly it's great. It really is. And this year, a lot of extra excitement with the opening of the two new exhibits. You got to lead a ribbon cutting ceremony. Just talk for you what, what you think about these exhibits and the city's commitment to this interpretive center to keep expanding it. Well, the interpretive center over the years, three and a half decades now, has just gotten better and better and it will continue to get better. There's more exhibits on the way and that takes a long time to bring to fruition. Uh, the docents do a great job in, in curating, and there's a bell, you hear it? Anyway, the, uh, everyone who works here, most volunteers and staff, do a great job in putting this together. So this is a long-term plan and vision for the Interpretive Center. It's not going anywhere, so hopefully 100 years from now it'll be even more spectacular. But, but the Fresnel lens, that's been around 100 years, and when you stand next to it and think about that, that lens, that apparatus, putting out 20 miles of light starting almost a hundred years ago it's crazy actually the technology is awesome but they've moved it from the uh, lighthouse to the interpretive center it's spectacular big crowds around it as you might imagine in day one the whaling exhibit all the uh, different different uh, products that used to come when we didn't when we weren't producing oil in mass they used to produce a lot of stuff from whale blubber people don't realize or remember because that was a hundred plus years ago too it's a wonderful display of the new Fresnel lens that came from the um, lighthouse to be replaced by this little tiny LED light. And this is such an amazing contribution for our community with the great history that accompanies it. But what is so amazing to me is that I've lived here 34 years. This is 35 years that the Interpretive Center has been here and how it has evolved into uh, truly a world-class recognition uh, location, not only for one of our, the few iconic lighthouses in the United States, but also for what we have to offer here to the community uh, for within the Interpretive Center and surrounding the Interpretive Center. The inside just gets better every single year outside with this view today and celebrating the gray whale migration for well of a day why is it so important that the city does this every year well it brings the community together there's not any other day a whale of a day reminds us all that we live in this beautiful location and that the whales there is actually no better place to view the whales than here and so that these mammoths spectacular animals are in the water and that we can see them and if we don't see them that we are still here together uh, as one community and even though our community may expand throughout the world at a time at times 
We're so honored and humbled to have this space, and we make the best of it. Absolutely. Now, what is your favorite thing about Whale of a Day? Oh, my favorite thing about Whale of a Day, every year seems to be more and more the people. Um, the people who come, it's a... Uh, you get, I get to see people that I haven't seen sometimes in 20 years or more, and they come every year. And that, and the new children that evolve, that are here as part of the community. You know, look at this adorable baby over here. I mean, they're just so cute, and it's life. It's life, the beginning and the end, and ongoing forever. You know, even the people that come from around surrounding areas more and more each year just to see our beautiful community. It is, and it gets more beautiful every day. I, I, I'm really honored to be on this council on and off for so long, but I have to say that we've gotten to the point where beautification is also a big deal with us, and we're beautifying um, the medians of not just Hawthorne Boulevard, but throughout. So we're becoming more contiguous um, as a whole peninsula, and it just really shows how it stands out. The reason why we moved here was because rounding that bend, Portuguese bend, to see this magnificent location, this is home. So it's beautiful. So exciting always to be here at Whale of a Day. What are you looking forward to today? Oh, look at, just looking forward to the fun. Uh, listen, my wife and I, when we moved here eight years ago, we just really wanted to be part of a community where everybody comes out, spends time together, cares about each other, helps, you know, help each other out. And that's what this is. And Whale of a Day to me is just sort of epitomizes that reality here that we have in the community that come out, enjoy, celebrate. Hopefully we get to see some whales. Obviously I have a lot to celebrate with the new lens and our new exhibits. So if you aren't out here today and you see this broadcast, please come out at some point to see. It is really quite remarkable. You know, this started back in 83 with a concept while I was still on the council back then. And it is continually growing and putting more and more in terms of the kinds of displays. Uh, its concept was to include not only to celebrate the ocean and its environment, but the land. Uh, I'm looking forward to someday having an expansion on perhaps even a separate facility to do more justice to the land because there just isn't enough room here to do the land and yet the ocean is so important to the city. This is a marvelous thing. It's growing constantly with new displays, and I look forward to it continuing that legacy for years to come. And you know, that light that's in there, the lens, is so amazing to see it up close. Of course, it was in the lighthouse for many, many years, and now everybody gets to enjoy that. Well, that lens, it's called Fr Fresnel, and it was designed by a Frenchman whose name was Fresnel. And he had the concept of taking a huge lens that would be very thick and cutting it in strips and adjusting it so that essentially you had something light and yet it would focus. It was the laser of its day because it took a very small lamp, an oil lamp basically, and it was able to concentrate that and you saw it, it goes out over 20 miles. Isn't that amazing? Uh, this one goes even further because it's, uh, it's, it's in the third level rather than the first. So. You take a look at that and you got to be amazed at the forethought and technology that went into that. Amazing. And there's so much rich, rich history, like you were saying, about the land, the area, the sea, everything to do with Rancho Palos Verdes. Now, what is one of your favorite things to do at Well of it, Aiken? My favorite thing, actually, to be here and take, not only look at the displays, but to just sit out here in the amphitheater and enjoy the ocean, watch the whales when they come by. I mean, it, it, it lifts the spirit, really, it does. It's always great to be with our city manager of RPV, Doug Wilmore. This is your fifth whale of a day. Yes, it is. It's, uh, and I, th I don't think we've had more beautiful weather than we've ever had today. It's just really gorgeous. The city now celebrating 35 whale of a days. For you, why is this so important for us to put this on for the community? Well, it's an amazing event to bring people together in the community, and that's really what it's all about, is neighbors being able to be neighbors and to have events like this that are free that they can bring families to. And I, I kind of joked uh, before I was back in a hallway here and there was a traffic jam between strollers and things like that. But that's what it's all about. It's, it's a great family event for all ages. And so we really love it. 
big turnout from the community as always, but now with these two new exhibits at the Interpretive Center, your thoughts, the city's obviously been dedicated to keeping this resource here a very valuable resource. Yeah, we're really grateful to the U.S. Coast Guard and our partnership with them, and the, this is a permanent home for the Fresnel Lens, which, you know, lived in that lighthouse for over 100 years, and so we're grateful for our citizens and visitors can learn from this exhibit. It's really interesting, really well done. Appreciate our staff and designers and what they've done. And then the new mural as well, and it's just really beautiful. We're happy with how it's turned out. So uh, what's next on your itinerary? Are you going to go check the exhibits out? What else are you going to do today? Yeah, I'm going to go see how people are enjoying the exhibits. I got a sneak preview before, but there's great food here. I'm really looking forward to checking out the food trucks and mingling with our residents some more. You know, Liz, there are some serious whale watchers out here. That's what it's about. We're celebrating the gray whale migration and, of course, the census that takes place every year. Yes, The right American here. Cetacean Society's mm -hmm. L.A. chapter, they have dedicated volunteers year after year that are here counting the whales from December to end of April. About now, yeah. And it's so amazing because they have so much information and they just enjoy their time, so it's, it's pretty fun. So let's join those census takers let's on the it. back patio. So, Michael, it's great to hear have meet you here at Whale of a Day. For starters, what do you love about Whale of a Day? Well, it's just fun to share what we know about all the various critters that live out here with the public. Many of them have never seen a whale. Many of them never seen a dolphin. They don't realize that this whole area is a sanctuary for uh, marine mammals. There's over 25 marine mammals that are out here in our waters off PV. Uh, year-round at various times and it's just fun to be able to find them and share what we know about them with others. Today you're sharing out here volunteering with the American Cetacean Society every year the census takers are out here on the patio counting whales. Talk about that program. We started in 1985 and I've been doing it about 24 years. Uh, we begin the 1st of December and I believe this year going to the 25th of May and we cover the first the southbound and then the northbound gray whale migrations, uh, where we got some 27,000 animals that live up in the Arctic and feed in the summer and then come down here and go off uh, Mexico to have their calves and then turn around and come back. And right now, most of the adult whales have moved back north we're expecting in the next two or three weeks to see all of our moms and calves from this year. We've seen a half a dozen so far, but usually late May or late April and early May, we see the cow calves coming north. They're the last ones to come up after the mothers have fattened them up so they have insulation They're against the cold Arctic waters. Well, it's warming up here on this beautiful sunny day at Whale of a Day. I know so far you've just got one spotted, but once we see more, the bell will be ringing. We will. Hopefully a few of them will cooperate. In the past, we've had whale of a day in early March, which is the peak of our northbound migration. But in early March, we fight the rain clouds. This year, we scheduled it late, and it's probably a good thing because it was very wet the weekend we were planning to have it. So for the people that are here today and they want to know where to look for the whales, what do you tell them? <laughs> Just out in the water. If they're anywhere, you can see it best with the naked eye. But most of our marine mammals spend 99% of their life underwater. So you have to stare for a long time and you'll see a typical animal blow three or four times and then go down and disappear for five to ten minutes. If he's feeding, we see him. If not, he's just moving through and we have him in sight usually 40 minutes or so and then wave goodbye to him. We are having too much fun, so much to do, beautiful weather, what more can we ask for? Some food, some fun, let's go check it all out. Please answer, little darling, tell me where you can be. And it's been so long years since I've seen you, but your love still lingers on. Now with the Atkins family, tell me about the fun you've had at Whale of a Day. I like most is about, was all the games and yeah. And what about you, Mom? You said you learned a lot of fun facts today. 
I did learn a lot of fun facts about how to keep the ocean clean and the lighthouse. They took the lens out and put it in the museum here, so that was really neat to see. Olivia, did you make a hat? It's a whale. It's a whale hat. Please answer. I'm now being joined by Blue Rivard, the artist that painted the unbelievable mural in the new exhibit here at the Interpretive Center. Congratulations, your work is incredible. What went behind this mural? Uh, well, it took uh, seven months research uh, with, along with the painting. And um, since I had never painted whales before, uh, I'm used to painting marine life in the you know, Indo-Pacific and the, the realm there. Um, but um, the whales have a very interesting story. I usually left that to my colleagues who do this type of work. And uh, so I'm honored to do this and learn that there's so much about these whales, especially the gray whale that blows a heart through its blowhole. And, um, but uh, their habits, where they go, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so it was a great big undertaking, but um, worth it, I think. If you step inside what you see here over, this is kind of our admission area, where you see that we have a, a medical admission room at our hospital. And uh, you can see up here there's a lot of patients that are uh, malnourished and emaciated. Their skin is real close to their bones. And some patients need IVs. Um, and here's what we do. Here's a, lot of, uh, here's a picture of our fish freezer where we might have 9,000 pounds of frozen fish delivered each week. Right now we have more than 80 animals, so believe me, we're gonna use this up in a week. Every day we thaw more than 1,000 pounds of fish. Then gradually as they get better, you'll see animals here, they're swimming in a kiddie pool, and there was a fish grabber, so we're teaching them how to eat it head first, um, and then over time they'll graduate to a regular pool where they can dive and compete for food on their own, like that's what this one's in. Some of them will have a, uh, grease pen marking on the front, that's their patient ID, right? And others will get uh, a numbering system shaved into their fur. But uh, as you can see, they're very playful from the picture up here. They're very social animals. They like to lay together, to stay cool, to stay warm, to sleep. Day, that's for sure. It seems like it gets bigger and better every year. I think it does, that's for sure. And thank you all so much for joining us on the show today. And we'll see you next year. I'm Maria Soraya. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. Thanks for having a whale of a time with us right here on RPV TV. Please answer. Still lingers on. Don't forget me.